This is K1DBC. All stations, please stand by. The Denver Radio Club Learning Net starts in five minutes. Thanks for watching that. Whoops. <laughs> Thanks for watching that. Uh, eight more minutes of this, a few more minutes of this. I'll play actually just through the intro here. Um, uh, just after I uh, get the net started here. Yeah, welcome everybody. It's a strange and secret world of number stations from the Ringway Manchester. So let me uh, start the uh, intro to the net here and uh, I'll bring that right back up. This is K1DBC. The DRC Learning Net will start in one minute. All stations please stand by while the repeaters are placed into net mode.
I could watch that all night. This is cool. So again, number stations, strange and seek old number stations. Uh, bit into the world of uh, October here. Some uh, pretty cool uh, YouTube uh, Ringway Manchester, uh, UK-based uh, uh, amateur radio operator. So let's uh, let's get things started here. Yeah, good evening, Bob. Uh, good to see you as well. All right, hello and welcome back to the Denver Radio Club Learning Net. This is Kilo One Delta Bravo Charlie, and my name is Drone. I am Net Control for the Denver Radio Club Learning Net. Uh, if you were watching on my YouTube, I was uh, just playing a video, and I apologize for broadcasting over the air on that, but uh, uh, Secret World, uh, Strange and Secret World of Numbers Station. So uh, we've all heard about them. So if you just want to hear what they actually uh, sound like, uh, uh, pretty cool video we're just watching there. So. Uh, let's uh, let's get started here. Welcome back to the Denver Radio Club uh, Learning Net. It's a casual conversation where we can discuss ham radio and STEM topics in general. Thankfully, we have plenty of combined experience and expertise. We meet um, every Wednesday, except for the third Wednesday of the month, at 7.30 p.m. Mountain Time on 145.490 and 448.625. Both have a negative offset. Two meter uses 600 kilohertz, negative uh, 600 kilohertz, and 70 centimeter uses negative five megahertz, meaning you transmit on 144.890 or 448.025 respectively. This net can be broken at any time for emergency or priority traffic by using the word break. Is there any emergency or priority traffic at this time? You can contact us via email at drclearningnet at gmail.com. We also post info at groups.io forward slash g forward slash ham learning net, as well as stream and archive our nets and meetings on youtube.com forward slash whiskey Edward Romeo, Edward Golf Romeo 8. You can also search on YouTube for the club's call sign whiskey zero tango x ray or my call sign, Kilo One Delta Bravo Charlie. W zero T X repeater. This is K one DBC Net Control. We will begin by inviting Elmers only to check in with or without traffic. All Elmers, please check in now. Alpha Alpha Zero Juliet Kilo. AA0JK, good evening. We've got traffic. Kilo Alpha Zero, Victor Bravo Alpha. All right, Net Control would like to welcome and acknowledge the following Elmers. Uh, thank you both for checking in. Alpha Alpha Zero Juliet Kilo AA Zero JK Fred with traffic and Kilo Alpha Zero Victor Bravo Alpha KA Zero VBA Curtis. Thank you so much for uh, checking in as well. Again, just a weekly reminder, just in case if you haven't heard, an Elmer is just a kind of an older archaic term, really. It really just means if you have some guidance on certain things, uh, we're more than happy to uh, hear um, hear you out there. So uh, no um, uh, no responsibility come with checking in as a uh, as an Elmer, uh, and you it's more than you can you can do it uh, under any any voluntary circumstance. So uh, once more, if you'd like to check in as an Elmer to the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net, please call now. Sorry. 
All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Um, again, we do take check-ins online if you're not in the Denver metro area or if you're not within the repeater uh, coverage or, or whatever uh, circumstance, you're more than well, uh, welcome to check in online uh, to the YouTube. Um, I did also put a Discord link into the YouTube um, description, uh, video description. Discord is just a text channel, audio, uh, so if you can't make the repeater and you want to get your uh, uh, voice uh, over the air as well, uh, we can uh, try to make it to happen through that as well. Uh, with that being said, online we had Whiskey Alpha 4, Mike Bravo Golf, Bob from Pensacola checking in. Uh, appreciate you uh, as always here recently, appreciate that. Okay, with that, um, all other check-ins to the net will be taken in alphabetical groups based on the first letter of the suffix of the operator's call sign. The suffix is the first letter after the number in your call sign. If you can, please try to use ITU phonetics uh, with your call sign uh, as you check in and indicate if you have traffic or questions as you do. If your suffix begins with the letters A through M, alpha through Mike, please check in now. Kilo Papa Sierra, Kevin Lakewood. Whiskey Zero, Bravo Kilo Sierra, Barb in Wheat Ridge, no traffic. Kilo Zero, Lima Alpha India, K Zero LEI, Larry in Lakewood. Kilo 6 Hotel, Juliet Victor, Tom Arvada, no traffic. This is K1DBC Net Control. Go ahead and hold up there for just a moment. Uh, I'd like to welcome knowledge the following check ins K0KPS Kevin, W0BKS Barb, K0LEI Larry, and K6HJV Tom. Thank you all so much for checking in. Browsing reddit.com forward slash r forward slash amateur radio. Um, hand radio uh, enthusiasts post their uh, pictures and stuff here. All right, uh, one more time. This is K1DBC Net Control. Um, if your suffix begins with the letters A through M, alpha through Mike, and you'd like to check into the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net, please call now. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. We'll go ahead and open up the whole alphabet. If you'd like to check into the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net, just a general discussion about ham radio, STEM topics, uh, whatever you'd like um, in regards to that. Um, we're taking all call suffixes, alpha through Zulu. Please try to check in uh, if you can with IT phonetics. Uh, state your uh, call sign, name, and let us know if you have any traffic or questions. Please call now. Kilo Echo Zero, November Romeo Echo, Jim in Littleton, no traffic. Kilo Zero, Whiskey Echo Tango, Brad in Denver, no traffic. Kilo Zero, Yankee Echo Sierra, Ken in Broomfield, no traffic. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. I'd like to welcome to knowledge the following check-ins. KE0NRE Jim, K0WET Brad, and K0YES Ken. Thank you all for checking in. Okay. 
All right. Uh, this is K1 DVC Net Control for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net. One more time, if you'd like to check into the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net, we're taking all call suffixes A through Z. Uh, Alpha through Zulu, please call now. Kilo Foxtrot Zero, Foxtrot Papa India. Ron in Lakewood with a question. All right, in that time we had KF0, Foxtrot Papa India. Ron with a question. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Yeah, thank you everyone for uh, checking in so far. Appreciate all the uh, uh, the um, views here on YouTube. Always appreciate that. Yep, just behind the scenes of Net Control, and I like to uh, just try to show off things that are uh, ham radio related. So uh, feel free to check that out. Uh, with that, one more time, we'll take all call suffixes A through Z, Alpha through Zulu. If you'd like to check into the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net, just for the counter, if you have any traffic or questions, please call now. All right, this is K1 DBC Net Control. Uh, again, uh, before the net started, I was playing a uh, video about uh, um, uh, signal stations. Um, uh, and um, after the net, I'll be playing also just a really quick uh, six and a half minute uh, sci fi uh, horror film. Uh, we've, we've talked about before, decommissioned, uh, involves uh, ham radio and uh, International Space Station. So uh, stick around for that if you'd like. I'll, I'll remind uh, people uh, throughout the, or at the end of the net about that as well. So, with that though, uh, we'll throw it over to Fred, AA0JK uh, with traffic. The net is yours. W0TX, repeater. AA0JK, uh, great intro there, Daron. Thank you. Great intro. Always interesting to uh, delve into those clandestine uh, radio signals. Uh, of course, uh, with today's uh, satellites and technology, uh, I probably put uh, a damper on some of those stations because they can be zeroed in on uh, to quite quickly but always very interesting. Thank you. And let's see here. Also a note here. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has noticed that our, our ID, our frequency Denver Radio Club ID is getting clipped. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm only getting the K0, I mean the W0, and then it goes silent on the uh, TX uh, backslash R, uh, but the carrier is still there. So just uh, uh, to note, uh, I talked to Jerry about that, and it'd be interesting to find out uh, what has gone awry with our uh, repeater ID. Pause for a minute. Okay. Uh, we received a package from the ARRL uh, today, and so we opened it up eagerly, anticipating uh, the contents. And uh, we uh, received all but one item, and that was the new edition, uh, second edition grounding and bonding uh, book. It must be selling quite well because they are backlogged. <laughs> So I have to wait on that. But uh, uh, we received the uh, storm spotters, storm spotting for uh, amateur radio, and uh, looks like a real good uh, publication here. Uh, goes into safety, uh, equipment and resources, training, meteorology. They really get into hurricanes as uh, uh, this particular time of year is. Uh, applicable and uh, st uh, storm spotting activation so if you've got uh, any interest uh, in any of this 
uh, you might uh, take a look at this new ARRL publication. Also uh, in the package was the uh, latest little uh, 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 intro to radio uh, receiver kit that I ordered just for grins. Cute uh, little project there for uh, newbies, uh, maybe uh, some younger uh, Cub Scouts that uh, are interested in uh, possibly getting into radio and electronics. Team this up with the ARRL's Understanding Basic Electronics. Uh, it's item number 0823. That would make a good a little package for those interested in delving deeper into uh, the topics of radio and electronics. And, uh, by the way, looking through it uh, reminded me that uh, you, it's, it's got an IC in it, and you want to make sure that uh, if you get into any of these uh, projects, uh, to be sure that, uh, especially this time of the year, and if you've got carpeting, uh, not to zap those ICs, because you can short them, short circuit them, burn them up uh, with just a spark of static electricity. If you'd like a little bit more information on uh, uh, ESD, sounds like a disease, uh, ESD, electrostatic discharging, electrostatic discharging, you might read my article in uh, uh, the uh, W0TX uh, uh, list of articles for April of 2018. I go into depth of how to protect yourself from uh, electrostatic uh, discharges on your workbench and your uh, operating station. Also, the uh, ARRL, I know, has got uh, uh, an interesting little infit antenna uh, kit. It's good for 10 through 40 meters, item 0612. And uh, it's a good basic antenna to play with uh, to uh, learn a little bit more about antennas. Of course, it looks like it's going to need a, uh, a counterpoise or a radial. But anyhow, team that up with uh, your, your uh, basic antennas book, ARRL's uh, basic antenna book, uh, Niner, 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 Four, Nine, Nine, Niner, Four. But... Uh, Let's see, anything else? Uh, I think I've uh, consumed enough airtime here. <laughs> Daron, back to you, AA0JK. Not a problem ever, uh, AA0JK Fred. This is uh, K1DBC. Yeah, glad to hear. Oh, I think I may have been muted there. My bad. I thanked Fred <laughs> quite a bit. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, this is K1DBC Net Control, uh, and just uh, experienced some uh, some audio issues on my end here. But uh, this is K1DBC Net Control. Um, appreciate that again here, Fred. Uh, does anybody have any comments, questions in regards to anything he brought up there about any of those uh, ARL publications, um, kits, anything like that uh, uh, that we've spoken about so far? Go ahead. All right. Uh, don't ever hesitate to uh, check in at any... Um, um, uh, uh, lull in the conversation, you're more than welcome to check in, or if you have any uh, comments or questions, don't hesitate to uh, let us know. Uh, with that, though, we'll, uh, we'll throw it over to uh, Ron KF0FPI with a question. Uh, the net is yours. Go ahead. Uh, yeah.
Yes, good evening, Nat. Um, I had a question. I built the two-meter Yagi that was featured in, um, well, it would have been October's uh, On the Air magazine, and I tweaked and tuned on it. I could not get the SWR under... Oh, for I think three and three quarters, the best I could get. What I wanted to ask, maybe people that know more than me, if I needed to put a one-to-one balance on that to have a prayer making it work. Thanks. Great question there. I'm trying to bring up the uh, October edition of the uh, On the Air magazine uh, to bring that up here. Um, would a one-to-one ballon be required for that? Uh, hopefully the On the Air magazine, um, baffling to me here, the October edition is not available online. That's that's wonderful. So um, let me just check uh, anyways, uh, these other ones. Um, so with that, uh, is a one-to-one uh, ballon required for that? Anybody, uh, two-meter Yagi, uh, go ahead. Yeah, AA zero JK, Fred, go ahead. AA zero JK, yeah. If you uh, built that uh, uh, antenna according to spec, if you got all the dimensions and everything uh, as published, I, I would not uh, consider the antenna itself to be an issue. I would be looking at your feed line and uh, seeing if uh, uh, you've got uh, some issues there. Uh, with your, your feed line and connectors. And as far as the one-to-one ballon, uh, they're always nice to have, but I don't know that it would be necessary on that. But I have not seen the article, I have not read the article, but it looks like Darone has zeroed in on it. And uh, unless they actually uh, specify the use of it, uh, I wouldn't be real concerned as though they are but they are nice to have in the uh, system because it uh, prevents uh, any RF coming back down the feed line and into the shack. Uh, and a lot of the uh, antennas, the dipoles, and a lot of these antennas that you see these days, especially those that claim that they don't need a, a uh, counterpoise or radial, which is uh, a, a misnomer. Uh, they, you see a lot of advertising where they, they claim they don't need uh, that addition, but uh, uh, I've got uh, one here that's a good example, the Diamond uh, BB7V uh, vertical, telescoping vertical. When I saw that, uh, I, I was really attracted to the fact that it was a telescopic uh, so that you could easily t- take it up and put it down. But uh, come to find out that they have got it wired to where it uses your your uh, coax as the counterpoise, which is uh, really now. Wait a minute. You know why on earth would you want to be bringing your uh, radiated signal right back down into the shack like a boomerang? Uh, it's it's using your your coax for the other half of the antenna. And there, you would definitely want uh, to uh, be installing a uh, ballon, a one-to-one ballon, a one-to-one isolation transformer. But on your particular project there, uh, I would looking, be looking at the feed line uh, to uh, make sure that uh, everything is copacetic there. Because if you put it uh, together according to uh, their dimensions and everything, uh, should work just fine. A zero JK. Thanks there, Fred. Um, Sorry about that. This is a K1 DBC net control. Yep, uh, looks like it's the July edition of the uh, the QST magazine. 
uh, or excuse me, over the air magazine, July, uh, starting on uh, page, um, uh, what do they have here, 22, uh, building a two meter Yagi antenna. Yeah, the instructions seem uh, fairly straightforward. Let me drop, make sure I'm not doubling over somebody. Yeah, tools and materials required, uh, epoxy, PVC, hacksaw, uh, soldering iron, uh, materials, uh, PVC lump, uh, plumber pipe, uh, connectors, uh, steel welding rods, and uh, split bolts. Uh, so it looks like it's some uh, just uh, some fairly physical layer um, electronics there. And uh, I mean, when, they, when it comes to uh, tuning and mounting, um, they, they just talk about um, just measuring SWR, um, and uh, they don't really mention too much about the uh, any grounding required or um, counterpoise or uh, balance. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, interesting to hear uh, more about that. Uh, glad to hear you. Uh, uh, we're building projects out there. We're building antennas. Uh, yeah, you could see this is a uh, um, some stuff you can get at the uh, your your typical um, uh, uh, lumber store, or whatever, uh, uh, Home Depot, etc., whatever. Um, with that, I'll throw it back over to. Uh, KF0 FPI Ron, uh, go ahead if you have any other further uh, questions or comments on that. Go ahead. Um, yes, I do. KF0 FPI. I, um, I built this thing, did it what the print says, and the print's very simple. And I threw a, I bought a brand new Comet um, CCA 500, and that's what I was checking this antenna with with a 25, 25 foot um, 8X coax, factory made coax, and I could not get it to come in. I never threw, put my radio on it, and um, I just couldn't get it to go. I did change uh, radiator, I mean uh, reflector. I changed some lengths, put them back, and it never really changed. I got it down from six, to three and three quarters, and I was scared to throw my new um, scared to throw my new FT nine nine one Alpha on it. Um, KFC or FBI out. JK. Gotcha. Sounds good there. Yeah, uh, that sounds like a good antenna analyzer, um, and as well as a good radio. Yeah, hopefully uh, it wouldn't. Good, good precautions to take, not not plugging it in. But, uh, yeah, very, very good. Uh, AA0JK, Fred, go ahead with comment. Yeah, AA0JK. Uh, as Daron was uh, scrolling through that article, I noticed that uh, they're using alligator clips on the radiator, and I hope that that's not what you're, you're using on yours. Uh, I would want a better, much better uh, connection there on the radiator element yeah there you go drone and uh, uh i would have want to uh, see a solder joint there going to that uh those two elements and make sure those two elements uh aren't touching but uh just a thought a a zero jk KF0 FPI? Yeah, KF0 FPI, go ahead. I didn't even try the alligator clips. I soldered I soldered the connections on to a, uh, a connector mounted on a piece of plexiglass, and I really tried to make the thing work, but um, wasn't brave enough to put it on the radio. All right, KF0, FPI, this is uh, K1DBC. Yeah, thank you for the uh, the information there and all the follow-up, uh, as well as you uh, there, uh, A0JK Fred. Yeah, good solder connections. That, uh, that makes the uh, the world a difference. Uh, I mean, alligator clips may be in testing, uh, but uh, definitely want uh, good solder joints uh, in, in general. So, yeah, good to hear you have that. So um, it is two meters, so you could hook it up to, if you have a cheap handheld, you know, I guess, yeah, I guess you could always try that potentially. 
I, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you have good line of sight, um, I mean, they use these. I think they use something similar for contacting ISS, things like that. Um, so uh, depending on what uh, what your testing circumstances are, um, yeah, maybe just a, um, a cheaper radio might uh, might suffice for, uh, for testing purposes. So, yeah, uh, this is K1DBC Net Control. Uh, great information there. Um, yeah, on the Air Magazine. Uh, let me drop here for a moment. W0TX. Repeater. Uh, this is K1DBC Net Control. Um, they may have trial. They have probably trials for uh, ARL, um, but uh, some of their publications require a monthly subscription. Uh, but they have uh, plenty of uh, plenty of resources um, on the Air Magazine, QST Magazine. Uh, they have QEX. Uh, N's, uh, I forget what NCJ, uh, N, uh, NCJ stands for, um, and then a bunch of other things here. So uh, great information in their, uh, their publications here. Um, I'll throw it back out to the net. Again, does anybody have any comments, questions? I'll, I'll, I'll take official check-ins here in just a moment, but uh, anybody else have any other comments, questions in regards to anything we've spoken about so far? Please call now. KF0, FPI with a comment. Yeah, FPI, go ahead. Yeah, to Rome. I um, I kind of bagged that project and leaned it on my back fence. But in QST um, magazine, oh, what 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 is this? The newest one. It is October 2021. On uh, page 41, they have a dual band Yagi. Unfortunately, it's made in China, but. I bought one, I put it together, and it works awesome. The SWR is unbelievable. Back to net. All right, very cool, uh, FPI Ron. Yeah, just looking at that here. Um, the HYS TC YG08UV. <laughs> Mouthful there, dual band VHF UHF Yagi antenna, uh, designed for two meters, 70 centimeters, offers five elements on 70 centimeters and three on two uh, meters. Uh, Trade off is reduced gain in return for lighter weight and a smaller footprint. Um, a boom is only 36 inches in length. There are two driven elements with individual gamma matching sections, but they combine to single two SO239 uh, with its uh, all aluminum construction. Weighs about two pounds. It's rated for 100 watts. Uh, it could possibly uh, tolerate more. So yeah, it looks like a pretty good uh, uh, rig here. Um, a pretty good um, uh, a Yagi uh, build. Yeah, you know, sometimes, you know, in, in the, um, here, let me uh, drop for a moment. In the days of Apple, and you kind of just want things to work a little bit, kind of maybe. Um, you're more than happy. I think we're all more than happy to, to play around with kits and, and uh, uh, get our hands dirty. But uh, sometimes we just want something to work, and if we can't make it work, unfortunately, you know, uh, there's plenty of other options out there. Price is a hundred dollars, so yeah, you can't really beat that. Uh, so uh, yeah, great, uh, great mention there. Um, the um, YG08UV dual band uh, Yagi antenna. All right, uh, very cool. Uh, this is K1DBC Net Control. If you've just tuned in, this is Darone, K1DBC. I'm Net Control for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net. It's a general conversation, casual conversation about ham radio, STEM topics, and we have plenty of combined expertise and experience. Uh, so if you'd like to check into the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net, um, <coughs> please do so with your call sign. If you can, try to use ITU phonetics. Uh, state your name, and if you have any traffic or questions for the net, please call now. November 0, Tango, Romeo, Papa, Jim, and Lakewood. Good evening. Late check-in. Kilo Echo 0, Sierra Uniform Mike, Jonathan, Lakewood. No traffic.
we should play a game one day about here. L- listen to what you hear and tell me what you, what you I hear. I think I doubled with some drone. That's okay. Kilo nice. Echo Zero, Sierra Uniform Mike. Jonathan, Lakewood. Be a good game. Good game. It's, it's fun to kind of train your ears with that. November Zero, Bravo Uniform Papa. It might be another game you try to bring up here. I'll play like three or four call signs all at once, and we'll see if we can pick them out. So that's John here. Again, everyone, welcome to the YouTube channel. Appreciate you all checking things out. Uh, appreciate everyone being here. Um, don't hesitate to throw anything in the uh, comments or questions or anything here. K1DBC Net Control. I'd like to welcome to knowledge the following check-ins. N0TRP Jim. KE0SUM Jonathan. WD0CIV Charles. There was a double there. No problem there. I got you. I got you. Uh, and then we had N0BUP John. Uh, thank you for checking in. All right. This is K1DBC Net Control. I was just. Uh, Telling the people here on YouTube, yeah, maybe one day we'll bring a game to you to the net of uh, we'll play. I'll play a few call signs, and we can see who can pick out all the uh, the call signs there. Uh, it's just a good good training exercise. So yeah, doubles happen, and unfortunately, I guess there's really no technical way to to, to block those kind of things. So uh, just as net controls, we kind of have to uh, um, listen and, and hone in our, our listening skills. So uh, that's okay. Uh, with that, one more time, this is K1DBC Net Control. Uh, I'll throw it out to the uh, Denver Radio Club Ham Learning. Now. Are, are there any other uh, Check-ins at the moment. Please call now. W zero Foxtrot Foxtrot Charlie Jerry on tree no traffic. Kilo Foxtrot Zero Alpha Whiskey Charlie Brian Sweet Ridge no traffic. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Golf, Ryan and Aurora. <laughs> Dang. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. I'd like to welcome the knowledge of phone check-ins. W0FFC Jerry, KF0AWK, Brian. And I think I doubled uh, with a Orion uh, call sign ending in golf. I apologize. Uh, can you call back once more with your uh, call sign? Uh, please call now. That's Kilo, Foxtrot, Zero, Echo, Delta, Golf. Is that a W? That was a little bit too quiet for me. Drone oh. correction on my call sign. Kilo, Foxtrot, Zero, Alpha, Whiskey, Charlie, Brian, in Wheat Ridge. Oh, right. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. This is K1DBC Net Control. Uh, it's a correction on the uh, call there, KF0. Uh, and I've already lost it. Um, sorry, give me just a minute here. Too many things. That's just what happens. Oh, yeah, AWC. Okay. Okay. All right, sorry. KF0AWC, Brian. And then I apologize once more. Uh, Ryan with a Romeo. I apologize. I heard Kilo Foxtrot Zero. Echo something golf. Uh, go ahead once more. Sorry. W zero T X repeater. That's Echo Delta Golf EDG.
All right, this is K1DPC's Net Control. I think I got things straightened out there. Apologize about that. Yep, so Kilo Foxtrot Zero Echo Delta Golf. Ryan, got you checked in. Uh, good to hear uh, new call signs, new names in here. Appreciate everyone checking in. Um, hopefully you're uh, finding this net well, and uh, don't hesitate to uh, check in at any time. Uh, give us any comments or questions. Um, yeah, uh, this is K1DBC Net Control. This is K1DBC Net Control. I guess we'll give a real quick plug out there. Uh, again, we do stream on YouTube. You can uh, check out um, my perspective of this net, as well as past nets and past meetings. Um, you can always check in there if you can't reach us uh, over the air. Uh, we have a Discord. Uh, it's pretty quiet, though, so I don't expect too much about it from that. Um, yeah, uh, you can search for us on YouTube, uh, Whiskey Zero Tango X-Ray, our club call sign W0TX or my call sign K1DBC, and you should be able to find it. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. I didn't see anybody else indicated they had any traffic or questions, but uh, I'll throw it out to the net. Uh, any other buddy, excuse me, does anybody else have any other comments, questions, check-ins, traffic, anything else you'd like to uh, pass for the net, please call now. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. I definitely have a few things I can pass um, uh, traffic-wise, uh, but uh, I'll throw out once more out to the net. Uh, any other comments, questions, um, anything regards to what we've spoken about so far or anything else uh, you'd like to bring up, please call now. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. I guess I can uh, pass a couple things here, uh, traffic-wise. Uh, let me drop, and then I'll um, I'll throw it back out to the net. Uh, we have uh, we usually um, go until about 8:30 uh, p.m. Mountain Time, 20:30 um, um, UTC, or uh, uh, 24 hours. Um, but uh, it's not a hard stop. So with that, uh, let me drop, and I'll, I'll bring a couple things up here. Here in the Denver metro area, uh, this is K1DBC Net Control. Um, this is, um, uh, I should have brought this up earlier, um, in, but uh, from uh, August uh, 26th, um, the, the Denver Public Library is now allowing passes to check out tools from the Denver Tool Library. Uh, more info, denvertoollibrary.org, woodworking tools, metal tools, uh, usually requires $100, uh, $120 per year uh, membership. Um, but you can think of it as a, um, a, a, a maker shop, hacker space. Um, they got plenty of, uh, plenty of tools to, uh, to loan out and rent. Um, so you need a, a valid uh, Denver Public Library uh, membership card and ID. You can check up, out up to 10 tools for the week uh, with up to three power tools. Uh, uh, customers under the age of 18, they'll need a responsible to the company to sign the waiver. Um, they are, uh, two libraries open Tuesdays and Thursdays, 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturdays and Sundays, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, denverlibrary.org for more info. I know uh, we've spoken about uh, hacker spaces in the past and uh, um, this is just trying to get your hands on into uh, in, in other uh, engineering uh, disciplines. Yeah, easier, J.K. Fred, go ahead. Yeah, just uh, an additional comment here on uh, the antennas that uh, claim that they do not need a uh, uh, counterpoise or in the uh, uh, area of uh, raised verticals, uh, radials. Uh, they claim that, uh, beware. Uh, I currently... Uh, uh, am using an isolation uh, transformer, one-to-one -one isolation transformer, uh, in antennas that use the 
a coax for uh, a, a counterpoise or radial. Uh, currently uh, using the uh, LDG uh, RU one to one uh, un un. The RU one to one un un on my uh, coax line right before it goes into uh, uh, the uh, tuner. So you might keep that in mind so that you're not uh, getting that uh, feedback coming back down and into your radio, into your shack. AA0JK, back to net control. All right, this is uh, K1DBC Net Control. Yeah, good uh, follow-up there, uh, Fred, on uh, on uh, potentially or the, the fallacy of, of not needing um, a counterpoise um, uh, with these types of antennas. And uh, you can certainly try to um, purchase products or, or make things, uh, but I think, uh, yeah, you might find at the end of the day it's um, – it's it's just not a feasible um, a feat potentially so yeah and uh, one to one uh, ununs and uh, balance kits uh, yeah these definitely help uh, match the SWR um, uh, good great follow up there thank you Fred all right this is K one DBC net control. Uh, I can pass a few more things here, but does anybody else have any other comments, questions, anything else so far uh, you'd like to bring up for the net? Please call now. KF0 FPI, question for the net. Yeah, KF0 FPI. Uh, Ron, go ahead. Yep. I, I should finish up a six meter hex beam project I'm building in the garage. And my question to the net, um, if my SWR is a mile off, should I try one of those one-to-one -one balance, an inline or in feed? Uh, would like a comment or maybe advice on that. Thanks. JK. Yeah, A is your JK. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, if you're uh, building one of these uh, six meter X beams, uh, I wouldn't be concerned about that. That's not going to be an issue as far as solving uh, high SWR. As long as uh, the antenna is uh, built to specs or, or if it's a manufacturer built, I wouldn't be too concerned with it. I'd be more concerned about uh, high SWR having uh, issues with your feed line, your feed line. Check the connectors on your feed line. Uh, if you uh, added fittings to a piece of coax, make sure that you're not shorting out between the braid and the inner element of the feed line. But uh, you shouldn't need a, uh, uh, a, a, uh, an isolation transformer in that uh, regard. Back to net control. W zero T X repeater. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Yeah, thanks there for the follow up, uh, A0JK Fred. Uh, FPI, hopefully that uh, somewhat uh, uh, answered your question there a little bit. If you have any other follow up on that, go ahead. FBI. Yes, I'm. I'm putting up a. It's about a 25 foot mast on a rotator, and I'm. I'm trying to get this hex beam put on top before I. It's a lay down that I designed, and I'm doing everything short factory coax testing, and I might even bring my radio up to check it. So if my SWR checks out good. Um, or bad, um, should I add the balance? Negative. JK.
All right, sounds good there, uh, Fred. Hopefully, yeah, FPI. It sounds like uh, you wouldn't need to introduce a one-to-one Una Nabalin into that uh, situation there. Um, uh, yeah, thanks there, Fred. I don't know if uh, you or anyone else had any follow-up on that. Go ahead. Yeah, if you're having an ISWR, I'd be looking elsewhere. I would suspect feed line issues. AA zero JK back to net control. Thank you, Fred. KF zero FBI. All right, sounds good, uh, KF zero FBI, and uh, yeah, thanks there, uh, Fred. Is K for the follow up? Um, with that, y'all throw it back out to the net. Anybody have any other comments, questions, check-ins, anything else you'd like to bring up so far for the net? Please call now. This is K1DBC Net Control. Quick reminder, I will be just playing, um, as it's the uh, spooky month, if you will, um, I'll be playing, um, but before the net, I played a, a numbers station video, and after the net, a six and a half minute video, it's the decommissioned sci-fi horror short film uh, produced about eight months ago, and it uh, involves uh, ham radio and uh, international, international space station, so uh, stick around for that if you'd like. Um, I'll uh, be playing that over the, uh, the YouTube. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Um, does anybody else have any other comments, questions, check-ins for the net, or anything else you'd like to bring up? Uh, please call now. Kilo Golf 5, Papa Delta Foxtrot. KG5, PDF, got you checked in. If you have any comments and questions, go ahead. some good action going on out there in antenna world uh, uh, actually I was, I was sitting here uh, arguing with Amazon trying to get a hold of a perf board rather quickly and the uh, light bulb clicked on and thought hey I bet some of you guys would know where to find if there is a place in town to find uh, a, a wide variety of electronic parts um, I've been to Micro Center and that's about it KG5 PDF back to them JK a, a, zero, a great question there, KG5 PDF. Yeah, and good evening as well. Yeah, plenty of uh, conversation here. Pl uh, appreciate that. Uh, yeah, great question here. Yeah, uh, Micro Center, I was going to mention, you can buy, buy some perf board there, and they have, they're have they breaking out to some some pretty good uh, maker uh, things. And yeah, we're lucky to have one here in uh, Colorado. Uh, so there are stores uh, throughout the uh, the United States. But uh, yeah, Fry's has uh, closed down. So, you know, um, brick and mortar stores to find this sort of stuff is very uh, far and in between. Uh, nowadays. So, yeah, I have a few more comments on that, but yeah, A0JK, Fred, go ahead. A0JK, yeah, do a search on all electronics. I believe they're out of California. All electronics, bring up their catalog and see what they have to offer. And uh, once you've got that uh, brought up, I'm quite sure other sites will uh, make their presence uh, known. But I have had very good luck uh, with uh, these folks' uh, uh, response to to my orders for uh, various uh, components. So uh, uh, give them a try. That's all electronics. AA zero JK. Roger, Roger. Uh, we got that down here. Uh, is that a, is that a, do they have a, a, a distrib distribution house or a storefront around Denver area? Negative, not to my knowledge, no. 
but their service is uh, uh, response is quite quick. So uh, about the time you uh, decide on what it is that uh, you, you 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 want, and if they have it available, as long as they've got it in house, you will get it uh, very shortly. They have a great response time. A A zero J K. Very good. Will do. Yeah, I've kind of kind of drifted away from DigiKey. It seems like you can't get out their door for less than ten dollars on shipping for a three dollar part. So, uh, well, this is one of those instances where Amazon is uh, pretty handy sometimes, but um, I, I'm really <laughs> having a hard time finding a, a specific size perf board I want here. So. Appreciate it. KG5 PDF. Comment. All right, sounds good there, uh, KG5 PDF. Yeah, and it is your JK. I guess uh, my two cents in here is uh, Spark Fun Electronics. Uh, they're based up in uh, Boulder. And uh, similar to DigiKey or uh, any of those other uh, electronics online retailers, um, plenty of uh, kits and individual boards. They definitely have local pickup uh, up in Boulder. Uh, so Spark Fun uh, is another uh, pretty good option there. Um, yeah, and in regards to, I guess it's kind of the chip shortage, really, is is we've heard of it in recent months and well, last year or so with uh, with uh, COVID. Here, let me drop for a moment. So due to that, uh, the rise in parts for some of these things that used to cost cents on the dollar uh, or, or or whatever are now uh, quite more expensive uh, due to just. Uh, um, other companies ordering things up in mass, and 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 the hobby is kind of left being uh, left to the wayside. So, uh, is your JK Fred uh, yet another follow up there? Go ahead. Okay, Daron, good point there on the uh, uh, Boulder uh, store there. I forgot all about them. Have never actually done business with them, but I've heard heard uh, other comments about it. But uh, I know radio shacks and uh, outlets are still uh, operating under uh, Radio Shack, and you might uh, look there also to see if there's anything uh, available along those lines at uh, any of the uh, 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 remaining Radio Shack uh, outlets. But uh, with the increase uh, that we are going to be seeing in postage and shipping, uh, it uh, definitely uh, creates a, a, a problem there. But uh, some of these outfits, though, if you make a minimum of purchase, they will ship for free. So uh, depending upon, uh, if you're only going to nickel and dime a purchase, yeah, that you're going to get bit by the, uh, the, the postage. So, uh, uh, the uh, uh, best best way to, best way to go is uh, like you said uh, if you can find something local. A A zero J K back to net control. All right, this is K one D B C net control. One other thing that we see, not just with this, just any type of electronics or just anything, I guess you buy maybe locally, is the um, the convenience factor really, and potentially if you purchase something online, it'll be cheaper, but you won't get it immediately. You can get it immediately, but it'll be uh, more expensive. So, um, yeah, it, we're we're seeing um, international uh, shipping nowadays, and and it's uh, um, Amazon has really uh, shown the market for how to how it really just takes out the the, the mom pa bell uh, shops and these uh, retail uh, brick and mortar stores. Um, everything can be purchased online, and uh, I think with the recent pandemic, things just kind of got pushed even more there. And it's a uh, it's it's just definitely making things uh, more difficult to find locally. Um, things like that. So yeah, great question, uh, PDF, uh, and uh, yeah, Fred A's or JK for the follow up. Uh, so if if PDF or uh, Fred or anyone else has any other follow up on that, go ahead. Yeah, KG5, PDF, go ahead. 
yeah, so he, he brought up a, a good point there about Radio Shack. I had, uh, I actually hadn't looked around in this town yet. Um, they are still much so live online, and um, in a lot of towns, this hobby town uh, partnered up with them. So most looks like just about any hobby town you go into has a Radio Shack Express, uh, which which means uh, for anyone who hadn't been there. Um, in my experience in Tulsa, there was about a old oh, ten foot wide uh, section of uh, shelves and, and, and uh, uh, you know pegboard hangers, and they had uh, quite a variety of you know battery battery holders and switches and LEDs and a lot of random things like that that you might uh, might use, uh, you know, maybe on your RC car or something like that. Um, they didn't really have, they probably had some resistor packs or something, but uh, it was definitely a limited selection as far as a, uh, a you know, some, some in-depth electronics go. Um, but I'm looking, I pulled up the Radio Shack locator here, and um, it looks like uh, Computer Central in Strasbourg is uh, is an authorized Radio Shack dealer, uh, which that's pro or I'm sorry, that's in Burlington. Um, that may be quite a. I'll zoom my map out, map out here. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sheer Auto Parts is an authorized dealer. Uh, it's in Strasbourg on Colfax Avenue. And then there's another one up, a true value up in Estes Park. Um, let that drop a second there. Um, so uh, a person would probably have to give them a ring to see exactly what they've had. Um, I've seen some stores still listed that um, strictly sell cell phones these days. So. Um, I uh, may have to give them those two places a call and see what exactly they're up to. KG5 PDF. All right, KG5 PDF. Yeah, good to know uh, that... Uh the Radio Shack brand is trying to live on through potentially its original roots. Um, it maybe shouldn't have uh, strayed so far, even in uh, my childhood in the, in the 90s. They, there was just a lot of stuff that, that maybe potentially strayed a little bit. But yeah, nice to see that there's a potential. Uh, yeah, look uh, in this locator here, yeah, uh, the Hobby Town Express. It looks like there's quite a few locations um, that has this uh, Radio Shack Express. And uh, yeah, the Sheer Auto Parts. It'd be interesting to see what these... Uh, what actually the manifestation of this looks like in, in kind of the last stage of, of the uh, the Radio Shack uh, brand. We'll see how long that lasts. So good to hear that there's at least some some semblance of uh, some 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 kind of electronic stores out there potentially for the for the masses. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Uh, we're running over our time just a little bit again, but again, there's no uh, strict time limit to this net. Um, I guess I can bring up uh, one or two more things here, but I'll throw it back out to the net. Did anybody else have any other comments, questions, check-ins, or anything else you'd like to bring up so far for the net? Please call now. I have a check-in. November 1, Zulu Tango Tango. Dan from Denver, no traffic. I have a question in 0BUP. Check in KF zero BPN Evergreen, no traffic. Late check in N three NOV Parker, no traffic. All right, this is Net Control. Uh, I'd like to welcome to all of the following check ins. Uh, November 1, Zulu Tango Tango. Um, 
Dan, as well as, um, excuse me, uh, losing my place here. Uh, KF0, BPN, Jeff. And then I thought I heard November 3, November 0, or Oscar Victor, N3NOV, or something like that. Uh, can you go up, call back once more? Yeah, you're spot on. November 3, November, Oscar Victor, uh, Scott and Parker. Okay. That's what happens when you second guess yourself. Yep. Oh, that's not going to work. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, uh, the, the the three in your call sign just threw me off there. Yeah, November 3, November Oscar, November, or uh, Oscar Victor. November 3, November Oscar Victor. Scott, uh, thank you for checking in. Appreciate all you uh, checking in here. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. I guess real quick here, I can uh, pass uh, one last uh, or two thing here, and then I'll uh, ask for more check-ins, anything else for the uh, the net, and uh, we'll wrap things up. This is November 0, Bravo Uniform Papa. I have a question. Yep, sorry about that, uh, BUP. Uh, forgot about that. John, November 0, Bravo Uniform Papa. Go ahead. I'm wondering if you could hear me. I'm using a really old radio. This thing doesn't have a PL tone on it or anything like that, and uh, it, it can seem to be hearing me. <laughs> so is the PL shut off while you're on the net? Yeah, you're sounding great. Uh, coming in a nice, um, uh, soft, um, I can't really describe it, but it sounds great. Yeah, uh, full, full uh, uh, quieting. A little bit of background, but uh, definitely uh, readable. Yeah, and as you, as you stated, yeah, the uh, PL tone is removed for the net. Uh, so, yeah, you're sounding great. Uh, if you have any other follow-up on that, go ahead. W0TX, repeater. Yeah, that answers my question. I was just curious about what how I could get in when it didn't have a PL on it. <laughs> and uh, it's a really old radio. This thing goes back 40, 45 years. So I'm, I'm, I'm sort of surprised. But I'm glad to get in, and I'm glad to hear that uh, that's the reason why. No, nothing happened here. I'm in central Arvada. My name is John, and uh, the only thing happening here is that the leaves are changing, and it looks beautiful on the streets. Uh, talk to you later. Thanks very much. Seven three. All right, sounds good there, uh, BUP John. Yeah, this is K1DBC Net Control. Yeah, I uh, love to hear kind of just those uh, potentially antique radio. I mean, that's I'll just throw it out there. It's a little bit older than me, so uh, that that's cool to hear. That uh, yeah, it's still sounding just as great as probably uh, the day it uh, it was working uh, originally. So yeah, and it's uh, yeah we're we here in uh, Denver, and uh, I guess <laughs> in in this uh, part of the hemisphere, we're uh, moving into the autumnal season, and it's yeah the weather is beautiful and turning uh, nice and cool at night and uh, during the days and yeah seeing the uh, leaves fall so yep yeah, love to see uh, the seasons change and it's a uh, yeah really nice uh, change of pace for the uh, for the weather so yeah glad to hear that so yeah uh, i'll throw it out to the net uh, anyone else at the moment uh, any other comments questions check-ins go ahead Yeah, KE0SUM. Uh, Jonathan, go ahead. I'm sorry I came in really late. Uh, my daughter and I were doing some things, but I was kind of watching. Uh, it was a great thing about YouTube. But way earlier, you, a guy was talking about a three-element Yagi he is making uh, as a directional. And uh, I was gathering that maybe he was interested in how to tune uh, the, the directed element. Uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe you can refresh my memory on what happened with that. I'd appreciate it. Ke zero SUM. Back to that. All right. Yeah, this is a K one DBC net control. Yeah, I'm trying to bring it back up here uh, quickly. But yeah, this was from the uh, on the air magazine uh, July. There were some plans uh, to build a uh, two meter uh, uh, Yagi uh, antenna. And um, there was a, a question of, um, it didn't seem to be, um, they were just a bit hesitant to hook it up to their uh, own equipment, uh, their expensive radio, um, fair enough. Um, 
let's see, where is it here? Um, uh, and uh, we were just uh, kind of discussing um, if uh, any ununs were required or any uh, counterpoise or a uh, system like that. So yeah, we were kind of just referring to the uh, the article itself and uh, the build instructions to, to kind of confirm any of that. So uh, if you have any follow-up on that, go ahead. Uh, no, for some reason right there with that one, the two-meter Yagi, uh, I thought it was about tuning the driven element, but uh, I could have been mistaken. Thank you. All right, gotcha. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, a lot of antenna discussion this evening. So yeah, maybe uh, conflating that with something else. But uh, yeah, if anybody uh, has any other follow up on that, go ahead. Well, that's my web browser crashing. That's good stuff. At least it wasn't my streaming software. <laughs> All right. All right. This is K1DBC Net Control for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net. Um, I'll pass uh, just one more thing here. Um, I'll, I'll reach back out to the net. Um, great blog to read, rtl-sdr.com. Everything related to software-defined radio and uh, just some really... Higher level engineering and uh, definitely lower level projects. And a lot of fun here. Uh, uh, article titled uh, Rasb Raspad 3.0 Review Building a Portable Raspberry Pi 4 Tablet with Built in Software Defined Radio. It's a portable tablet enclosure for the Raspberry Pi 4. It comes with a high resolution 1280 by 800 10.1 inch touchscreen, built in speakers, battery, plastic enclosure, excuse me, and uh, that houses the LCD driver board in Raspberry Pi. A uh, few months ago, uh, so it's uh, available on Amazon for $259 or uh, directly on the website for uh, $219. Um, really cool looking product here if you want to play with software-defined radio on the go in tablet form factor. This looks like it would be a great option. It has a uh, breakout for a, a SMA connector so you could plug in an antenna. So a uh, really slick looking uh, kind of all-in-one enclosure for uh, software-defined radio um, on the go um, experimentation. Yeah, plenty more info, rtl-sdr.com. This is a top news story again from today, uh, October 6th. Uh, so let's see what else there is here. Yeah, plenty of stories on there uh, to, to read about. Also, hackaday.com we discuss. Definitely go check that out. They have a, a weekly podcast and uh, just talk about uh, electronics and engineering and uh, all sorts of things. So, um, yeah, I don't have much more else for this evening. Um, I'll throw it back out to the net. Any other comments, questions, uh, check-ins at the moment? I'll, I'll take a final uh, call for check-ins uh, here in just a minute or two, but any other, uh, anything else just at the moment, please call now. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Uh, definitely uh, appreciate everybody hanging out on YouTube. But again, after the net, uh, just because it's a spooky month, um, I'll be playing a um, amateur ham radio related video in International Space Station. A pretty cool uh, video that came out uh, eight months or so ago. So uh, stick around for that if you want. Um, with that, I guess I'll do a final call. Any other comments, questions, check ins, anything else for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net this evening? Please call now. And sorry for uh, people that are uh, late joining here. Again, you can find us on YouTube, um, our club call sign, um, Whiskey Zero Tango X-Ray. Just search on YouTube, and you should be able to find the live stream um, or my call sign, K1DBC. So if you want to check that out, feel free to do so. All right. Anything else here in the chat? Anybody have anything here? Let me know. Um, last few minutes here. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Um, this will be the final call. Any other final check-ins, comments, questions for the net, please call now.
All right. I guess we'll uh, just uh, cover uh, club business here real quick. Uh, next meeting is going to be October 20th at 7 p.m. Uh, more info on our club website, w0tx.org. Presentation is How Can a Ham Live Happily in an HOA? Uh, very uh, often uh, talked about subject, uh, covenant controlled, um, in, in places where you can't put up antennas. So presented by Stan uh, Trout, uh, WB2SHR. We've had him here on the net. So commonplace in Colorado, uh, HOAs that is, uh, have restrictions on outside antennas, including but not limited to ham radio antennas. Uh, October presentation is adapted from their presentation of the uh, villages in Florida and including his own experience, uh, but uh, feels like it will uh, succeed in, in this environment as well. Uh, more info, w0tx.org. Uh, we um, um, chat, and uh, it uh, takes place on Google Meet. Uh, there is a Elmer session at 6 p.m. Uh, till 6.45. Very similar to this learning net, just a very uh, general Q&A. Um, just uh, come hang out. Yeah, you don't have to be a part of the club or a ham radio operator. It does uh, get streamed on uh, YouTube as well, but uh, most of the chatter is uh, on, on the meet. W-0-T-X, repeater. Again, very much appreciate all the uh, participation here. Um, um, it's great to see new names, new call signs, new voices. Uh, definitely appreciate that. Don't hesitate to uh, check in or, uh, or whatnot. This is a pretty casual conversation. Uh, so, yeah, uh, glad to hear everybody here, and uh, hopefully we'll hear you all soon. Um, let's see. I'll start to uh, wrap things up here. This is K1DBC. If you wish to contact Darnet with topic suggestions or to set a date to act as net control operator or guest Elmer, you may do so at any time via email at drclearningnet at gmail.com. We're also on groups.io, as mentioned, uh, forward slash g forward slash ham learning net. And again, on YouTube, uh, see people, couple people joining here, appreciate that. So yeah, again, very casual conversation. Uh, you're more than welcome to jump in here at any time as an, uh, as a, as an Elmer or uh, net control. If you could see my screen, you see I'm just kind of reading off a script. And uh, just over time, I just get more comfortable and, and go off script a little bit. But uh, yeah, you just kind of got to read the script, take check-ins. I can always help with that as well. So um, don't hesitate at any given point. Uh, that's what this uh, net is for. So uh, yeah, we had a total of 23 check-ins this evening. Really well. I appreciate that. And uh, I'd like to thank everyone who participated. Uh, we especially appreciate and thank our Elmers. Thanks to the Denver Radio Club for allowing us to use the repeaters for, the nest, for this net. Uh, we invite you to third Wednesday, join us on the third Wednesday of the month at 6 p.m. for an Elmer session prior to the regular scheduled Denver Radio Club meeting at 7 p.m. Again, more info on our website, w0tx.org. All right. Uh, please join us next week. 1930 hours mountain time for the next Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net. Uh, great conversations all this evening. Uh, I know I've been slacking a little bit on updating the groups.io, uh, but uh, I'll try to get a little bit better at that. But uh, yeah, uh, feel free to check things out always on, on YouTube if you want. Uh, so uh, with that, I'll go ahead and uh, close the net here. Um, all stations, please stand by while the repeaters are placed into normal mode. All right, again, thanks everyone for joining here. 7 3 to all. Glad to hear everybody uh, is hopefully doing well and uh, at least to uh, hear your voices on the air. Again, Halloween is coming up. A great, uh, I should have brought this up here now, but uh, great introduction into getting in electronics. So, uh, plenty of times throughout the month, uh, still this month. So, uh, I'd love to see uh, projects you might be working on uh, for Halloween. So, with that, 7 3 to all. Um, glad to hear everyone out there. Uh, keep your comments, questions, uh, check ins coming in, and uh, we'll hear you, uh, listen to you all on uh, uh, next LearnerNet. Uh, see you all next week. All right. Thanks, everyone, for uh, sticking around here. Um, appreciate that. Again, uh, I'll be playing this uh, real quick uh, six-and-a-half-minute video here um, that I closed. Uh, let's see. Where did it go here? There is an ARL article on this as well, uh, I believe. Um, and um, gives a bit more info on that. Uh, yeah, SuitSat 1 is really what this is about. Um, and it was a, 
uh, Suitsat One was an actual thing that uh, we put uh, amateur radio um, um, signals and operations into a uh, an old uh, spacesuit. So uh, really cool story. And then uh, over the last year, somebody's uh, made a really cool uh, horror film on that. So I will play that. Um, feel free to leave any comments or questions on it. This is on, available on Vimeo. Um, I will put it uh, in the chat here in a minute. Um, but uh, let's let's roll into this. And Suitsat is deployed, although haunting, evoking the image of a stranded astronaut floating away from their spacecraft, Suitsat is on its way, heading into the Earth's orbit. Filled with ham radio equipment, it's ready to transmit pre-recorded messages from school students and enthusiasts around the world. Houston reports a good deploy to ensure no recontact with the International Space Station. Suitsat's orbit will decay in a few weeks, where it will then enter the Earth's atmosphere and burn up. Hi, right, Assistant Houston, this is Commander Diaz. Do we have any debris close to our trajectory? Evening, Commander. Negative on that. Clear sailing as far as we can see down here. If there was any cause for alarm, you'd know we'd see it too. Your crew members can keep sleeping tight. Well, I'm seeing something out there. I can't make it out, but whatever it is, it's getting closer. I'll tell you, Commander. We're not getting even... Houston, repeat again. You're not going to believe this. I'm picking up transmissions on the ham radio that sound identical to the suits I experiment. And that debris? It's an Orland spacesuit. I'm not sure I'm hearing you right. Repeat that, Commander? Suit set. I'm seeing suit set. You're mistaken, Diaz. Suit set re entered the atmosphere and burned up years ago. It's impossible. Yeah, I know it's impossible. But I know what I'm saying. It's suit set. It's come back. And it's not just in orbit. It's headed right for the ISS. Commander, you're not making any sense. Can you say that again? Commander. Commander. You need to try it. Oh, Pew. The sky is black. 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 I need to alert the crew.
W zero T X repeater. All right, so really cool video here. Um, yeah, and there was a uh, ham radio, uh, maybe 2.0, or is it uh, AR, well, ARLSQ uh, plus uh, somebody else to interview uh, the filmmaker as well. So here's just some audio from the R, the actual RS0 R, uh, RS uh, transmission as well, too. Maybe. And we all. This is Sat One, amateur radio station, RS Zero RS. Mission time is zero 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 three zero one minutes. The temperature is twenty seven degrees Celsius. The battery voltage is twenty seven point four volts. This is Sat One, amateur radio station, RS Zero RS. So yeah, really cool. And, uh, just, uh, nice thing for, uh, for spooky uh, Halloween things. So, hey, glad you could hang out. Uh, check out the links in the uh, the chat here. I'll put them in the description of the uh, YouTube. Um, <clears throat> appreciate everyone being here this evening again. Um, love it. So, um, yeah, if anybody has any other further comments or questions, there's, there's just a few of us here, but. Uh, let me know. Um, otherwise, I'll, I'll probably just uh, in here in just a moment. Perfect. Okay. Well, again, pleased. Uh, a pleasure to be here. Uh, thanks, everyone, for being here. And uh, y'all have a good evening. We'll see you next week.